It's always been cancer and heart disease and diabetes, but now Alzheimer's is really gaining on all of these, especially in America. Uh, one of the reasons I'm so passionate about Alzheimer's is because growing up, I saw my grandma, Dottie, my, my dad, my you know, city mother, I saw her brain slowly get worse and worse and worse. She used to live in Brooklyn, and we would, you know, see her all the time. Uh, she would cook for us. She made the most amazing chopped liver. Uh, I hate chopped liver, but I love my grandma Daddy's chopped liver. Uh, it was just amazing, and she just loved that. I mean, always said, oh, I love your chopped liver, and she, she was always so nice and kind, always looking so beautiful, and she was always so active and playing cards and tennis, and she loved dancing. And she was this amazing person, but it was so sad to see her brain go down. And as I grew up, I was like, I was always into health since I've been 13, thanks to my dad again. Uh, I grew up very unhealthy, eating a lot of crappy food. I would have pizza and french fries and cheeseburgers and macaroni and cheese, and I felt really sick all the time. I had bronchitis. I had to go on this medicine, uh, these steroids and antibiotics, which made me sick. And my dad's like, hey, why don't you come to these health seminars with me? So we started learning about health and well-being, changed my diet, and we literally cured my own bronchitis just by drinking milk within a month. I was able to cure my own bronchitis. So at 13, I was like, if I can you know, cure myself without drugs and medication, I should help other people get better without drugs and medication. So as I saw my grandma's health go down, then I really became passionate about the brain and said that the best way to help people is to get their brain in tip-top shape. Uh, so, you know, I have my personal story that I've accomplished to help get myself healthy, and then unfortunately I wasn't able to help my grandma because I realized that kind of after it was too late, but now I'm here to help all you guys help prevent Alzheimer's and dementia from yourself as well as your loved ones as well. So who knows any of the causes of Alzheimer's disease? Does anyone know? Sugar. Sugar, right. So sugar is the number one cause of Alzheimer's disease. So we get diabetes is, gives you about 70% more likely to get Alzheimer's if you have diabetes. The researchers are actually going to change the name from Alzheimer's to diabetes type 3. That's how big this diabetes and sugar levels are. So what we want to do is get our sugar levels in order. So we look at blood work. Does anyone get blood work? So what you do when you go home today, look at your blood work, and you want to look at two things, what's called your hemoglobin A1C and your fasting glucose. If your fasting glucose is under 100, you're good to go. If it's above 100, we got to start working on it immediately. The hemoglobin A1C is another test. That has to be under 5.7. It has to be under 5.7. So if your hemoglobin A1C is above 5.7, that's going to mean you're more prone to diabetes, your sugar levels are high, and that's going to cause brain dysfunction that could eventually lead to Alzheimer's or dementia. All right, so who's got another idea of a cause of Alzheimer's? Aluminum. Aluminum. So where do we find aluminum? In cans and sodas, deodorants, and deodorants right? Where else? Frying pans. Frying pans, exactly. <laughs> so what we have to do, instead of frying with aluminum pans, what should we fry with? You know, stainless. Stainless steel, exactly. So we would rather reduce the aluminum by using stainless steel. Uh, storage containers, we have to do it in glass. So rather than you know putting stuff in aluminum foil. You're going to use, yeah, you're going to store it in glass containers uh, with deodorants. So you got to get deodorants that are uh, aluminum free. Oh, that's hard to find a good one. Well, actually what I use is baking soda. Ba someone else told me that baking yeah. soda online. Yeah, baking soda is so cheap, it's so easy, it's non-toxic. You literally just put it on a washcloth and tap your armpit and it takes away any smell. It doesn't clog any of the uh, pores. Uh, because these antiperspirants, does anyone use antiperspirants? So antiperspirants are going to stop you from sweating. You don't want to stop the sweat. The sweat is a way you detox. The human body is amazing. So we have ways to detox, whether it's through our bowel movements, 
through urination, through the period, through sweat. So if we do antiperspirants and you stop sweating, you can actually have toxins build up and it could actually lead to stuff like breast cancer as well. So we want to definitely stop using antiperspirants. We want non-aluminum deodorant, and if you really want a cheap, easy version, just use baking soda. It works very, very well. Uh, okay, what else can cause Alzheimer's? Sugar substitutes. Sugar substitutes. So, right, so when we say don't eat sugar, don't eat sugar substitutes either. Uh, so there's a splendid and sweet and low. These have a lot of chemicals in them. So even though it's not the sugar that's aggravating stevia. the brain, stevia is better than those other ones. Uh, but the best sweetener is coconut sugar. coconut sugar. But what are you sweetening? Like, what are you going to use it for? Coffee. Right, so we want to stay away from coffee, too. So a lot, of, a lot of people are in stress mode. And coffee stimulates your brain even more. And that's going to put you more anxiety, more stress, and more sleeping difficulty. So we have a lot of patients that come to me with insomnia and anxiety and high stress and tension and we don't want to have them stimulants. We want to get them more relaxed and calm. How come on TV a doctor well, there's your answer right says <laughs> you drink as much coffee as you can handle, it's not bad. I know they isolated on the Starbucks coffee an ingredient that gives you cancer, you know, uh, in the roasted yeah. thing. But how come Dr. Oz says, you know, there's all these different things about yeah. coffee and I'm a little confused about the coffee. Yeah, they so, said it you know, increases your brain uh, uh, alert and alertness. alertness and stuff like that. You know. Right, so with Dr. Oz, you got to be, every day I got questions about Dr. Oz, you just got to be very careful because, <laughs> you know, he might be trying to please other groups and so it's his vested interest in you. We don't really know that for sure. Like, is he really going after everyone's health and well-being? I mean, I think he's better than, you know, most medical doctors because he's more open-minded to the natural stuff. But, you know, the things that he pushed, we might not necessarily agree with 100%. So if I have a patient who has sleeping difficulties, anxiety, adrenal fatigue, I have to get them off coffee. So, and, and everything's individualized. So I do have patients where it's okay for them to have coffee. But that's why I analyze each patient individually and see what's appropriate for them. Okay. Honey is a sweetener. Honey, yeah, I mean, honey is a sweetener. Uh, it's not as bad as all those other things that we were talking about. You know, if you have a sore throat, honey is very good for that. Uh, but what are you putting the honey in? Tea. Tea. All right, as long as it's not green caffeinated, tea, tea right? Uh, as long as it's not caffeinated, so. Yeah, the green tea is okay. Uh, the green tea is better, so but it's better, much better to make your own teas uh, at home, and you just. Chop up the ingredients, put them in a, in a pot, a non-aluminum pot, and you know, boil the water and uh, just make your own tea at home rather than buying stuff pre-made. Because most of the stuff that's pre-made is pretty toxic to our body. So the best way to be healthy and save our brains is to do all the stuff at home. And if you don't have enough time, what I always recommend is, is meal prep. Like on a Sunday, when you have a bunch of hours together, Get your whole week planned so you don't wake up Tuesday morning and be like, oh, what am I going to have for lunch today? It's already planned, and you just stick it in the toaster oven and heat it up so you're prepared. If you're one of these people that don't have time every morning to make their meals, you got to use preparation and get prepared on the weekend beforehand. Are there brain benefits to coffee, though, that are great? It, it depends on the individual. So there's some people that I said I'm okay with them having it. Would it would help? But most people, I'd say probably 85 to 90 percent of the people, I'm trying to get them off coffee. I have a question. Yeah. So if if you drink coffee and it stimulates the brain, yeah. then how would that relate to Alzheimer's? Wouldn't it prevent it? If well, you're no. stimulating your brain? No, because the, it's overstimulating. So you can be understimulated and then you can be overstimulated. So the people whose brains are already overstimulated, that's the ones that are going to have the problem. Uh, like you were saying, like, isn't it beneficial somehow? If there's understimulated brain, then it's appropriate. But most of the patients we encounter, their brain's too much firing. They have anxiety and they have high stress and they don't sleep well and they have poor digestion. It's like, so those patients, we need to calm down the brain and Mine get is it. There's understanding. So well, we'll say, we'll say. I'll fix that. All right, so what else causes Alzheimer's disease? Glucose. Glucose. Gluten. 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 gluten, right. So, you, you, everyone know what gluten is? No. 
so gluten is like, um, it's a protein that's found that is sort of like a glue for bread and pasta and muffins and crackers and cereals that keeps everything together. Uh, there's an issue with gluten in America. So when you go to Egypt or Europe, the gluten actually is not as bad. But we have this company called Monsanto in uh, America who produce <coughs> most of the foods. They cross-breed this gluten. It's all sprayed with chemicals. It's not food that our body recognizes. So when we eat bread and pasta and bagels and cereals and crackers, the brain's like, what is this gluten? I'm not used to it. So what happens is it starts attacking the gluten and it creates an autoimmune problem. But not only does it attack the gluten, it starts attacking the brain as well. Um, another thing that would attack the brain with an autoimmune uh, is dairy products. So I was telling you guys before about uh, my bronchitis. When I quit dairy, my bronchitis went away because it was a big congestion. Uh, people will tell you milk is good for your bones, but that's the dairy industry telling you that. That's not true. They have these celebrities with their mustaches telling you that milk does a body good. Just to never buy anything on a commercial. Because if it's healthy, it's not going to be on a commercial. Because everyone knows, you ever see a kale commercial? <laughs> yeah. But you see a Dorito commercial, right? You see a Coca-Cola commercial, a Burger King commercial. Healthy food aren't on commercials because everybody knows this is healthy food. So when you see these milk commercials, they're trying to convince you that it's healthy and saying, oh, it does a body good. But the only body that does good is our cows. So milk is made for cows. Does anyone have sheep milk? Goat milk. Goat milk? Are you a goat? Not recently. Not recently. <laughs> so the only people that should, the only ones that should have uh, goat milk are goats, or sheep milk are sheep, or cow's milk are cows. Yes, goat milk is healthier than cow's milk, but nothing is better than human breast milk. Are you an almond? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I have to go with the same thing that you said, not today. <laughs> no, almonds are good. So the, the milk is made for the babies of an animal, but almond milk is good because uh, what it is is there's a, there's a problem though with almond milk is that most of the almond milk is water. There's not many almonds in it. So if you're going to have almond milk, you should make it at home. And what you do is you just take some sliced almonds, you soak it overnight, and then you uh, put it in a blender and then just mix it with water and you get your own almond milk. Very, and it's full of almonds. And that you could definitely use. That would be very, very healthy. But a lot of stuff in the, in the store is full of sugar and it's full of additives and sweeteners and uh, there's not much almond in it. So almond milk is good, but I would make it at home. Just soak it over Okay? All right, so what else causes Alzheimer's? What? Lack of exercise. Lack of exercise. Great. So Harvard came out with a study that showed uh, smoking is not as bad as sitting. Wow. Yes. But this doesn't mean go out and smoke a cigarette. <laughs> but what it does mean is that we shouldn't be sitting so much. All right? So everyone stand up and just do a little shoulder roll. And you always remember, you never want to sit for more than 20 minutes straight. 20 minutes is the max. What do you do Backwards. The Shoulders backwards. Don't go forwards. Go backwards. And always remember, that sitting will literally kill you quicker than smoking. Wow. Sitting kills you quicker than smoking. All right, now everyone sit down. <laughs> okay, so the question was, how could, I said only roll your shoulders back. Don't roll forward because if we look around, look at everyone's shoulders. Everyone is already rolling. In, right? We don't want to become one of these uh, hunchbacks all hunched forward. So the more you roll forward, the more you're going to enhance that. So we always only go back because you're always going forward, right? You're uh, texting, you're reading, you're writing, you're eating, you're doing laundry, you're washing. I do all that stuff. Uh, washing dishes. <laughs> so what we want to do is bring it back. We want to bring it back. So we do every 20 minutes, you know, if you're watching TV, every commercial, but you get up, roll it back. If you're... You know, in my lecture, we're going to get up every 20 minutes. So you always, you know, if you're out to dinner, just get up, roll back, go to the bathroom. If you're at work, get a cup of water, 
uh, go out for your cigarette break. Well, not your cigarette break. <laughs> so what I have patients do, actually, who are getting off cigarettes, they go out for straw breaks. Because the breaks are important. You know, you won't want to be sitting at a computer for three hours straight. That's not good for the brain. So they get up, they go outside, they take a straw, and they just pretend like it's a cigarette. Yeah, <laughs> Most, yeah, like, well, no one can even see. People are like, no one's staring at your straw. You're breathing in. You're breathing in. Most people smoke because they like just the deep breath. It's not the, it's not the cigarette that relaxes them, it's the deep breath. They're like, <coughs> so you can just actually do it with a straw. So you go out for your straw break, so you take a break for your brain, for your body, and you get up so you're not sitting. All right, so I'm going to go out for straw. Not during my lecture, then. All right, what else can cause Alzheimer's disease? Is it thyroid linked to the memory? Uh, yes. <laughs> thyroid? Yes, so the thyroid is super important. Many people have thyroid issues. The problem is, when doctors look at blood work, they're usually only going to check TSH, which is called thyroid, thyroid stimulating hormone. The problem is their scale is way too big. So I practice what's called functional medicine. Have you guys heard of functional medicine? Yes, indeed. Good. So with functional medicine, we have different scales because the people who are going to the hospitals and these labs are very sick. So when they're sick, when they say you're normal, you're normal compared to all these sick people. And I don't want to be normal compared to sick people. We want to be normal compared to healthy people. So with functional medicine, the scale is a lot tighter. So for thyroid, for instance, uh, the scale is, for most labs, is about 0.2 to about 4.6 for TSH. My scale, the functional medicine scale, is 1.8 to 3. So I have all these patients that come to me and say, hey, look, my thyroid's good. My doctor said it's normal. And then I look at it and say, no, your thyroid is either underactive or overactive. And then we dig a little bit deeper. Because we want to find out what's causing the thyroid problem. Is it a Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune thyroid? Does anyone have Hashimoto's here? Good healthy group here. I like that. Uh, so Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid. It could be from the pituitary. It could be a hyperthyroid. It could be a hypothyroid. So there's a lot of different types of thyroid uh, that you would have to dig a little bit deeper than just looking at the TSH. If the thyroid's not working, that controls all your hormones. Uh, it controls, you know, your cortisol, it controls your circadian rhythms, and if those are out of order, that could definitely affect your brain function. So, we want to get your blood work in order. What's the most common uh, deficiency in vitamins? Do you guys know? D. D. D, right. D3. D3. It's the most common deficiency in vitamins, and that's a big relation to the thyroid. When your vitamin Ds are low, uh, the thyroid is going to be messed up. The brain's going to be messed up. Uh, literally every single person I've tested in New Jersey and New York City is vitamin D deficient. And I've been in practice for over 13 years. And I haven't had a patient who's not vitamin D deficient. It's that severe. The best vitamin D uh, on the market is from Apex Energetics. Apex Energetics, because what they do, number one, it's a liquid form. So it's much better to absorb. It's a lot easier. But they also have these cofactors like vitamin K and calcium and magnesium and vitamin A and C and biotin that are going to help absorb the vitamin D. Don't ever get the vitamin D like at CVS. You know, that's really bad. Don't get anything at CVS. You know? There's literally nothing. They have candy and drugs and uh, the magazines about Kim Kardashian. And, you know, there's literally nothing good at but CVS. But the vitamins are not good there? No, the vitamins are not good there. Even the organic. Uh, they don't think about the absorption. That's why Apex Energetics is the only one that I personally take for vitamin D. I'm vitamin D deficient too. Um, so I have to take it as well. A-P-E-X. If you guys are interested, we're actually doing, um, we're having a 15% off sale. We have plenty of vitamin D, vitamin D here. Uh, you have to keep it refrigerated. So we'll just get it before you leave. And we'll give you a nice bag, and um, you take it with food is key, because there's this fat that we need for absorption with it. So we have it. It's Apex Energetics. You can't get it at the store. You have to get it through a doctor. So if anyone's interested, just come get me after, and we could uh, get you hooked up with that. Uh, what other vitamins do you think I'm going to suggest besides D? Bees. Bees? What would you take a B vitamin for? B complex. But why would you take it? B green. 
For energy? energy no. Yeah. Energy. 12. B12, why would you take it now? Energy. I heard it has something to have assistance with the uh, neurological system. So it helps with the nervous system. That's not a reason to take it. Energy is not a reason to take it. It's only in animal products? Uh, if you're a vegetarian, that's not a reason to take it either. <laughs> What's a reason to take B12? Help your brain. Help your brain? Not a reason? No, not a reason. Anemia? Anemia? you got to be more specific. Be more specific. I don't know. Right, so it's got to be an anemia where your B12 is actually deficient. You know, if it's iron deficient anemia, we're not going to take B12, right? So we look at the blood work. If the blood work is low, that's a reason to take it. Because if you don't, if you just take it for energy, you might not have decreased energy, it has nothing to do with B12. And then it becomes too much and you overload the system. So you only take supplements if you're actually deficient in that. So you're not going to take, uh, who takes calcium pills? Why do you take calcium pills? I was told. Well, that's not a good reason to take it either. Good marketing. Good marketing, right? Osteoporosis. Osteoporosis, not a reason to take calcium pills. Bone health, not a reason to take calcium. Well, they said as you get older, you need to take calcium. Getting older is not a reason to take calcium. If your blood work is low. If your blood work is low in calcium, that's the only reason you're going to take it. Calcium is the most dangerous supplement on the planet. Uh, it leads to breast cancer. It could lead to Alzheimer's. We're only going to take supplements if you're low in that specific vitamin. Or else it could actually become toxic. So just because it's a natural, organic supplement doesn't make it healthy. So it's appropriate only if you're actually deficient. So if you guys like show me your blood work and I look at it and I see the B12 is low, that's a different story. So then we're going to get you on that. But if it's not low, you got to be very careful. So I get these patients, their B12 is like 1300 and I'm like, okay, you got to get off it right away because it's too much. It can actually even cause peripheral neuropathy. So people will take B12 for neuropathy, and they're actually making it worse because the neuropathy has nothing to do with the B12. If the neuropathy does cause, is caused by the uh, low B12, then it's appropriate. So we got to look at each individual case. Yes? So would though uh, maybe someone's primary doctor say the percentages, and you may disagree, like how you were referring to the TSH before and the functional medical Correct. scale? So they could say to me, oh, you're, you know, you're low, you need to take it, but you may look at the numbers and feel that I'm not low. Correct, because they're comparing so you to like, all the sick you, people. I mean, that's a hard... So who you're going to trust are people right. who are educated in the functional medicine program. So if you want people to evaluate your blood work, you've got to go to a functional medicine doctor. I am one of them, but there's plenty all around. Um, but you don't want to take nutritional advice from your medical doctor who doesn't have the training in nutrition. So their training is more focused on surgery and pharmaceuticals. Now, if I need a surgery, America has the best doctors in the world. You know, emergency situation, amazing. If you're having a stroke, you better go to the hospital so they can thin out your blood. You know, if you break your leg, yes, we have the best doctors. If you get, you know, bit by a snake, go to the doctor. If you have an allergic reaction, go to the doctor. So in an emergency situation, we have the best doctors on the planet. But for prevention of disease and for health and wellness, uh, not necessarily the best doctors in the world. Because most of your, your healing power comes from within. Uh, there's a great quote right here that my wife loves. It says, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. So that's the future of medicine. It's not just treating symptoms with pills and taking out an organ that's not working. It's getting to the cause of the problem and fixing it and preventing it. So we're here to prevent Alzheimer's. The good news is Alzheimer's can actually be reversed, but even more important and a better way to approach it is to prevent it from ever occurring in the first place. So that's why we're going to give you guys these books after. So it's basically a summary of my lecture that's going to give you 17 ways you, you follow these rules. No one in this room will ever get Alzheimer's if you do all those things that are in the booklet. Do you look at the T3? <coughs> yes, the so the T3, so yes, do I look at T3? That's about the thyroid. So yes, a lot of times with, let's say, a hypothyroid, the TSH will be high and the T3 will be very low or the T4, we check free T3 uptake, we check antibodies, so we take about nine different 
thyroid test so we could figure out exactly where the thyroid problem is. Okay? All right, anyone else have any ideas of Alzheimer's disease? How do we prevent or the cause of Alzheimer's disease? Can you make a comment on uh, stress reduction and the meditation role in Alzheimer's? Yes. So the comment was, could we make, can I make a comment on stress reduction? And that is, that's what we are talking about, the coffee before, right? So most people are overstressed and anxious, and their brains are firing too much, and it takes a big toll on their body. It makes them a more risk for stroke and heart attack and cancer, as well as Alzheimer's disease. So how are we going to reduce our stress levels? What are good ways to reduce our stress levels? Meditation. Meditation, that's Exercise. great. Exercise. Exercise is great. Yoga. Yoga is great. I love all these answers. What else? How can else we reduce stress? Music. Music. Singing is great. Singing is great because it stimulates what's called your parasympathetic nervous system. <laughs> and that's the best way to reduce stress. So we could use neuroscience and do these exercises that are going to stimulate this parasympathetic nervous system. One of the exercises is gargling. So if you gargle really intensely, like, and you like shoot for the ceiling, like really, really intense gargling, you're going to activate this vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve puts you in stress mode. It's called the fight or flight mode. Uh, a lot of people here are actually in that fight or flight mode right now. I can see it in your eyes. And what we want to do is to relax the nervous system and start gargling and stimulating this vagus nerve because that's going to automatically inhibit uh, the sympathetic nervous system to get you out of that stress mode, that fight or flight. What else can we do to reduce stress? Oh, no, see, I was just going to say, yeah. suppose you have post-traumatic stress disorder, which everyone does from daily activities and incidences in life. Yes. How, that is going to stimulate stress. That's, that's not exactly right. Away. But so that, how do we, what do we do about that? Because that's it's, all the stuff that we're talking about. So we're going to do the vagus nerve activation. Okay. I see a ton of patients uh, with post-traumatic stress. And we evaluate their brain stem, and that's usually the area of dysfunction is in this vagus nerve. Probably 90% of my patients with post-traumatic stress have this vagus nerve issue. So we do neurologic exercise called functional neurology, uh, where we use neuroplasticity is actually creating new neurons in your brain. So you have these neurons that are overactive. We're going to kind of kill them off and create new bridges and new connections that are non-stress pathways. And that's going to inhibit the sympathetic nervous system. And then we're also going to do this meditation and the yoga and the tai chi. We're going to go on vacation. Uh, you definitely guys want to get out of your normal routine and travel. You want to take breaks from life, take off time for work. Uh, we're going on a cruise next week if anyone wants to come with me. <laughs> it's actually a seminar uh, with my mentor, Dr. Carrick, but we're going to be learning about uh, mild de debarkman syndrome, which is sea sickness. So we're going to be on this cruise. <laughs> And there's going to be about 40 neurologists learning how to help people with seasickness. So if the boats are too, uh, everyone's going to be in good shape. We're not everyone's going to be puking all over the place. Uh, uh, that's going to, that's the seminars where we're going to learn about seasickness and vestibular problems and people who get cars sick. Uh, so it's going to be a great seminar. But we like to combine, you know, fun, work, and pleasure. I just got something on Facebook which is very interesting. And what it says, people that are highly intelligent, their workspace is like a mess, yes. you know, that type of thing, yeah. and it gives a whole bunch of things about it. But then suppose at home you're a hoarder, <laughs> and your home, for example, has a lot too much stuff. So would that create stress? <laughs> well, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a, if it's a thing, so you ever hear people say, oh, it's like an organized mess? Yeah. So it's not going to create stress if they know where everything is. But if they're one of these people that can never, oh, where's that paper I put it, and they can't find anything, yes, that's going to create a lot of stress as well. All right, so what else causes Alzheimer's disease? Well, well to relieve the stress is okay. deep breathing. Deep breathing. So the best way to breathe is where you're going to double the amount of exhalation versus inhalation. So what it is, is if you inhale for two seconds, you exhale for four. All right? So let's everyone try that. So big breath in, one, two, and then out, two, three, four. I'm going to do it again. In, one, two, and then out, two, three, four. And then what you do is every week you add another second. So next week, so this week you're going to inhale two, exhale four. Next week we're going to inhale three and exhale six. 
the following week, inhale 4, exhale 8. Go all the way up to 816. And that's going to maximize your oxygen. It's going to bring more blood flow to the brain. It's going to get you in a more relaxed state, and it's going to reduce stress. Oxygen is super, super important. You know, it's great. I used to live in the city. There was, like, no trees, so that's one of the reasons we came here. Uh, we bought this house with all this big forest in our backyard. One tree gives enough oxygen for five people. So you want to soak up that oxygen. In your house, there's three plants that have the most oxygen produced, and that's aloe vera plant, a snake plant, and a spider plant. Those are the three best plants to get in your house, which produce the most oxygen, and that's going to help prevent Alzheimer's and dementia and memory loss. Those are the three best plants. And then we give them the carbon dioxide, and they give us the oxygen. So when you exhale twice as long, you're getting rid of all that carbon dioxide. For us, it becomes toxic, but the plants, they love it. So really breathe on your plants. Give them the love. Give them They're the not the prettiest love. plants, though. They're not the prettiest? I don't go by pretty. Now, I also understood that preventing Alzheimer's, if you click on the internet, and if you're on because of the hand motions and all that, some people are gambling with the hand motions. Las Vegas, they go to Atlantic City. But is that, but is that true with the hand motions and using your hand and your mind? Okay. Prevents Alzheimer's. So the question was, do hand motions Emotions help prevent Alzheimer's. Yes, they do. But I wouldn't do it from the computer. That's not the best way to prevent Alzheimer's. So we do like little um, frontal cortex. So Alzheimer's dementia always starts in the frontal cortex. If you do little finger movements like this, that's going to stimulate your frontal cortex. When we evaluate the brain, <clears throat> we find out is there a difference in the right and the left frontal cortex. Because most people get Alzheimer's, there's actually imbalance of the frontal cortex, where one is working too little and the other is working too much. So if I find during my evaluation that the right brain isn't working as much, then I'm only going to have them do the finger movements on the left side. Because we want to stimulate that right brain. And that brings it up and gets it balanced. And once it's connecting, then the memory and the focus starts performing a lot better. So finger movements, yes. But the computer's not good because you're going to be sitting all day. So you want to be doing stuff actively, standing and moving around with your little fingers. You know, go out and garden and plant and, you know, stuff like that is much better. All right, who else knows what causes Alzheimer's disease? Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, pharmaceuticals. So a lot of the medications uh, can have toxins in them. So we look at, when we look at the blood work, we look at the liver. Uh, we look at what's called the AST and the ALT. Most doctors, you know, they think is you're like 50 is okay. You know, we like all our liver enzymes under 26. So they should be under 26. If you're taking too much medicine, it can affect your liver. It can affect your brain. Uh, we were talking about um, heavy metals before. Uh, there's even um, mercury in one of the flu shots or one of the... Uh, one of the flu vaccines. Thimerosal, right. It's called thimerosal. It's like we're the one of the only countries that still allows the thimerosal in uh, the vaccine still. So you, you do have an option where you can get it without. So, you, you know, it's definitely appropriate. So the medication can also have uh, toxicity to it, which can affect our brain as well. But if you're doing everything in my uh, book, you won't need any medication because anything you have, like, you know, heart disease or cancer or Alzheimer's is going to be prevented by following yeah. these rules here. Get your chair. Somebody help me. <clears throat> All right, so who knows what else causes Alzheimer's? Any other idea? How yeah. about alcohol? Alcohol. Good answer. Good answer. So alcohol literally will kill brain cells. So some people say, oh, I heard on Dr. Oz that drinking wine is good for you. Um, however, the thing that's healthy is the grapes. So it's like, let's eat the grapes or the fermentation. You can ferment your own vegetables. So that's the healthiest part of the wine is the grapes and the fermentation. Uh, but no, you definitely want to avoid alcohol because that's going to kill off brain cells. Uh, and think about it, when you get really drunk, right, it's like you can't think and you start <laughs> drunk dialing or drunk texting. <laughs> Social drinking, what does that mean? Ten beers? That means drinking with other people, social drinking. Like what to do? 
one, one to two one in what, a day? A week. A week? Yes, obviously if you do like one to two a week, a lot, lot better than one to two a day for sure. Uh, but, you know, if it's something that's going to reduce your stress levels and it's going to make you less anxious if you have, you know, a glass of wine on a Friday night, that's okay. The best alcohol, if you have to drink, uh, would be like a Tito's vodka. Uh, that's like the cleanest. You know, the clearer the alcohol, the better. Uh, the wine in America is just horrible. It's full of all these chemicals and nitrates and sulfites. And uh, they did this. What's that? It has glyphosate. Yeah, glyphosate. Yeah, so that's uh, the Roundup. Put it up right now. That's better. That's a better option. Yeah, Why but they did this research in uh, California. A hundred percent of the wines in California have that. Uh, even the organic. Even the organic. A hundred percent. It's in the soil. Yeah, it's in the soil. You can't get around Monsanto. it. Monsanto. Uh, Monsanto again. And Monsanto uh, just got bought out by Bayer, the drug company. Oh, uh that's -huh. right. Yeah, so now they get you sick with their food, and then they double dip and give you the medicine to heal your sickness. We're getting rid of the EPA. Yeah, that's exactly. All right, who else has any other ideas about Alzheimer's, the causes or the prevention? What about prevention? How do we prevent it? What is it? Clapping? Clapping? Clapping your hand? All right, everyone give me an applause. I like it, I like it. One of the things is giving, actually. So charity, and that's in the book right here. So, you have to give to the world, and you have to go out and help other people. There's no better brain stimulation and brain activation than helping your fellow man. And it doesn't have to be anything big. It could just be helping, you know, somebody across the street, or picking up, you know, a paper that they dropped, and like somebody's necklace was dropped, and you know, Lauren was going, oh, whose necklace? You know, you're helping other people. She could have just put it aside and say, okay, if anyone comes and gets it, you know, that's fine. But she was actively looking to help people, and you know, go to the supermarket and give the guy two dollars who, you know, packs your bags. And they're going to be like, no, 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 I don't want it. It's, it's amazing when you just give people money. Like, everyone tries to give it back because they don't expect it. What do you mean? Oh, you don't have to tip me. They say, no, it's a tip. I want it. Please enjoy it. And it makes a day. They smile. And when you see that person smile that you give to, your brain lights up and you get high and get these endorphins. And it literally stimulates your brain uh, by helping other people. Uh, we do this thing... Uh, my wife, that's my wife, Jelani. Uh, so she loves to do where we get this big box and we send uh, school supplies to these kids in the Dominican Republic. Some of these kids literally don't go to school because they can't afford pencil and paper. So we just send to the whole Pueblo and we give them, you know, clothes and shoes and pens and papers. And then when we went down there, they, they, they loved us. And they it was like the greatest feeling in the world. You know, I could have gone to the resort and just gone you know, all inclusive and being at the pool, but we went to you know help the people, and that was made me feel so much better than just you know sitting on the beach, which is nice too. But, uh, but the brain stimulation just from giving to charity and helping others and being involved in the community. You know, everyone comes to me like watching the news and complaining about you know Trump does this and Trump. It's like let's not complain about the president and the government. Let's just go into our own community and help each other out. And don't worry what they're doing in Washington. It's like, let's make Emerson good, let's make New Jersey good, and New York good, and, and you know, pay it forward. So when, when all these people, hopefully you guys are inspired to start giving to other people, and then they're going to give to other people, and, and nobody's going to get Alzheimer's. It's going to be stimulating everybody's brains. That's my goal, is to just, you know, prevent all these bad diseases from occurring, especially in this community here. All right, so what else can we do to prevent? Okay, so you just hit on a lot of... Uh Bible studies, or if you're Jewish, you go to the Shabbat, and, yep. you know, the rabbi gives it. I go to all these things. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter what religion I am. <laughs> I meet everybody. Yeah. And, uh, and I go to also seminars, and I go to thing like the Cooperative Expo, or Expos in New York, and somebody said you were at a health expo, or wellness yeah. expo yeah. in the city. Yeah, so all of these expos, I go to meet people, shake Great. hands. And this uh, Bergen Fair, I think you was just yeah, there. Yeah, we were there. We were just there. Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah, that was a big one. Go and shake hands and feel real exactly. good about saying hello to Yeah, it's, real, it's very great for the brain. Yeah. A good hobby. Read. Yeah, a good hobby. Read it. Uh, you want to have a passion in life. So you need passion and you need joy and love. You know, I play basketball like three, four times a week. And, 
you know, that's very good for the brain, and you could take up sewing, and you could go to yoga class, and pick up a really good hobby that makes you happy. So don't go home every day after work and watch Netflix, and go on Facebook, and you want to be out in the real world doing real things, and try and, you know, stay away from all the electronics and do real stuff. About eating a healthy, colorful diet. Right, eating a healthy, colorful diet. You guys are great. All your answers are literally in the book here, but now it'll be a little bit organized. For you. So let me just finish this. So eating a colorful diet. Well, that means what he means by that is you want to eat the rainbow, is what I always say. So every day you have to eat something that's red. So you'll eat, you know, strawberries. So every day you got to eat something that's orange. You eat some carrots. Every day you eat something that's green. Have some cucumbers. Every day something that's yellow, some squash, some blueberries that are blue, or some eggplant or onions that are purple. So you have to eat each color every single day. If you eat each color, then you get all your nutrients. But we do want to get organic food because there's less chemicals in it. Is it 100% pesticide free? No. But is it less than the conventional food? Definitely. So, Especially the strawberries because those chemicals seep into it. So there's something called like the dirty dozen, uh, which is all the fruits and vegetables that have the most chemicals. But you don't really have to memorize the list, just think about it. And what it is, is if you have food that has a large peel, like a avocado, banana, cantaloupe, a watermelon, it's very hard for those pesticides to seep into the actual fruit. But something like where you eat the skin, like a grape or a strawberry or an apple, those are the ones for sure you have to get um, pesticide free or organic. So, you know, if there's a money issue, make sure the ones that you eat the skin, you at least get organic for those. Can you peel the apple, does that help? You can peel the apple, but it's still thin enough it's where it thin. seeps it's into it. So it's better, but I like the, the peel of the apple. That's where all the fiber and all the nutrients are. So when I mean an apple, the skin's the most important part. I don't want to peel it off. I just want to peel that has less chemicals on it. See, I peel it because it's so gassy. Well, that's a little bit different. So <laughs> when you have bloating, you know, for you, I know. I know, you know. You, so uh, we just have to work on your nervous diet. system, right, yes. and the diet and reducing that inflammation and the leaky gut. So, you know, we got work to do. For we do. Now. For, for reading, is yes. there a difference between reading on a table and reading a real book that you hold? I like reading the real book because, you know, like we were talking about before, the little finger movements are good, turning the pages. Uh, there's also, uh, with uh, the electronics, reading, I'll be careful, it's called the blue light. Um, so you guys, on your cell phones, there's something called night shift uh, on your settings. I would put all your cell phones on night shift. And that's going to filter out this blue light, which stimulates cortisol, puts us more in stress mode. Uh, so the night shift causes... Um, to, it filters out the blue light, so it's not going to aggravate your brain. We also have blue light filter glasses. Uh, if you guys don't, yeah, there's these glasses we have. They're in the, in They're in the, the other room. rooms. All our products are 15% off if you guys want. So you can get these glasses that if you're watching TV at night or if you're on the computer, you put on these glasses, it filters out the blue light to reduce cortisol and stress levels to help you sleep better and you energize yourself as well. It makes everything look a little yellowish orange rather than this blue light there. But it's much, much healthier for your brain because, like I said, we don't want to overstress the uh, brain. How right, so uh, about laughing therapy? Laughing therapy is great. So you guys heard laughter is the best medicine, right? So, yeah, there's actually, I don't know if it's in New Jersey, but there's definitely in, in New York where people go to these facilities and they literally just laugh. <laughs> and they just do these big laughs. Um, but, you know, Laugh with your friends and family and go to comedy shows and make jokes and, you know, you guys see during my seminar I'm making all these jokes because you guys are laughing and it's stimulating your brain. So laughter therapy is super, super important. Um, you don't want to be isolated and just, you know, watch TV and, you know, it's like you want to be in the community laughing together and that's, that is very good therapy for the brain. What else? Any other ideas? Sleep deprivation. Talk about that, sleep deprivation. So oh, yeah, sleep... Yeah, that's very good. That's my dad. I know. <laughs> so, uh, with sleep, we want, we want to go to according to the sunlight. So when the sun goes down, we're supposed to go down. So what happens is, if people stay up too late, then their cortisol levels are high at night when they should be down. That's increase in stress mode. 
So people say in the winter, everyone you know gets the flu and they're like, oh, it's cold out and I'm getting sick in the winter. It actually has nothing to do with the coldness, or else Eskimos, they would always be sick, right? But it's not the cold, it's people that are not going to bed earlier, because in the winter, <coughs> you're actually supposed to go to bed earlier, because the sun goes down around 5 o'clock. So you should actually be in bed a lot earlier, an hour or two earlier in the winter than in the summer. So according to the rules of the sun, uh, in the winter, we want to go to bed earlier. But most people keep the same schedule in the winter. What else do they do in the winter that's bad? Shovel snow. Shovel snow. That's good, actually. As long as you do it equally from right to left. Close the windows. Right. They don't go outside. They don't get enough air. They're not getting the sunlight, the vitamin D. They're probably not exercising as much because they're not outside. They're eating crappy food. They have uh, all the sugar, the Christmas cookies. Uh, they're going and drinking alcohol at the Christmas parties and New Year's parties and Thanksgiving. So in the winter, people are eating more sugar, they're under high stress, you know, you think about the holidays, you should be happy and have, but people are stressed about, you know, where am I going to go for Christmas, and whose house is it, Thanksgiving, and this family member does this, and this family, and so the, the holidays are actually very stressful, there's more sugar, there's more alcohol, there's less sleep, there's less vitamin D, less oxygen, less exercise, that's why people get sick, there's nothing to do with the cold weather, so never be scared of the cold, or be scared of not sleeping enough or you know not getting your vitamin D. When in the winter, we double up on the vitamin D. Super, super important because there's a lot less sunlight exposure. During uh, the nighttime, we want to get a deep sleep though. So it's not just going to bed earlier, but getting that deep sleep. So who uh, eats dinner, you know, like around seven, eight o'clock? Like who eats dinner? What time do you guys eat dinner? No one's raising their hand. Five, six. Five or six? Yeah. All right, that's good. So that's much better. Not by choice. <laughs> Not by choice? Yeah, the earlier the dinner, the better. Because why do we eat? Why do we eat? For energy. For energy. So why do we want to have energy at night to go to bed? <laughs> Doesn't make sense. So a lot of people will kind of skip breakfast, a little small lunch, and then get home late at night and eat this huge dinner. It's the exact opposite. You guys heard the expression, breakfast is the most important meal. So what we want to do is have a really big breakfast with high fat, high protein. And then a really big lunch, because we need it for energy. So the morning, the afternoon is where we need the most food. And then at night, you want to eat very small meal. So it's called eating like a king for breakfast, a prince for lunch, and a pauper for dinner. So it's a big... Biggest, big, smallest, in that order. Can you describe a good breakfast? Can you describe a good breakfast? Uh, well, you said high protein. Right, right. so, so eggs. eggs, that's a good breakfast. What else? Fruit. Fruit. Avocado. Avocado, high fat. What else can we eat for breakfast? A good protein shake. A good yeah, protein right. shake? Good protein Pro shake would be what, though? Because what's good protein right, shake? I can tell you what's in my shake. Protein powder? But what's the protein powder? It's an organic protein, unflavored collagen. protein powder, collagen protein powder, right. but unflavored, very important. But so like, it, where's the protein coming from? Like, is it from whey? whey? Is it from milk? Is it collagen. from rice? No, it's from it's, collagen. Is, it from, is that the only ingredient, though? Is there pea protein in no, there? No, or, or an alternative is pea protein, but then I have flax seeds in it. Yeah, that's good. I have uh, greens powder, organic greens powder. Good. I put in frozen fruit. I put in a little bit of almond butter, a few walnuts. I put in some cacao. And MCT Nibs, oil. cacao. That's great. Powder, and MCT oil. oil. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good one. Share it with us. Give. Remember, we got to give. Yeah. Uh, so much, much, good. Good. much better than a cup of coffee. You know, it's like have an actual fat and protein for breakfast. And don't be in this breakfast mode. You don't have to have pancakes and waffles and cereal. Um, a lot of people think I'm crazy, but you know, I'll have a piece of fish for breakfast, and I'll have a piece of chicken, and I'll have turkey. Like I have my dinner meal is my breakfast. So you don't have to have breakfast that you know the Frosted Flakes commercial wants you to have for breakfast. So remember, you don't want to do anything that uh, is on the commercial. The, the government has this list of healthy and unhealthy foods. On their healthy list is Frosted Flakes. Yeah. On the healthy list is Pop-Tarts. This is our own FDA. 
So are you cooking in the morning? Or well, you I have my, my wife. Is she uh, cooking cooks dinner in the morning? <laughs> no, well, she cooks it at night and then the and it's and it's left over and then you just heat it up in the oven. Oh, okay. Right, so um, what we want to do is make sure that you just get your high protein and high fat mm -hmm. uh, in the morning mm -hmm. as well. All right, any other questions, uh, comments? I was going to say whole grain oats for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Whole grain oats, I mean, it really depends on the situation. So if I have a patient that has, you know, diabetes or if they're, we're worried about Alzheimer's, I'm not going to have that because that's going to increase their sugar and their glucose levels. So we want the fat and the protein is going to do better. When we're speaking about the frosted flakes, the reason the FDA says frosted flakes are on the healthy list and pop tarts are on the healthy list because they say that fat is the, the enemy. Yeah. But that's the exact opposite. Sugar came up with this whole scam, the sugar industry, to make fat the enemy so they would leave sugar alone. So if you ever see the food pyramid, on the top is fat, meaning they think you should have the least fat, and on the bottom are all the grains uh, and the dairy products. We should actually reverse the food pyramid and should have the most fats on the bottom and the grains and the dairy products should be on the top. It's completely reversed. On the unhealthy list for the FDA is salmon. Yeah, is avocado, is coconut oil. Too much fat. Too much fat. So they say it's unhealthy, but they want you sick and they want you dependent on their system. But now that you guys are here and you know better and you're not going to listen to what the government says or the commercials say as well. All right, I'm going to finish up. Is there any other questions? I'm just making an observation about yeah. the fish. You've got to avoid fish that has mercury. Right, so the, mercury. the question was about fish and mercury. So the uh, big fish have the most mercury. So it's much better to buy smaller fish that have less mercury. Also, it's better to buy fish from the Atlantic. Because you guys remember a few years ago in Japan, they had that nuclear meltdown? Mm -hmm. All that radiation is in the water. <laughs> Right. So don't get fish from Thailand and China. How about Alaska? Alaska's right there too. Yeah. So all those waters in Alaska are polluted with the radiation. So you want to get more on the on the Atlantic side. How about the, the Gulf? Like the Gulf? Like shrimp and stuff from the Gulf? They uh, get the oil spills. They have the oil spills. <laughs> She's right. I'm sorry, I'm they do have the oil spills. So so what's the recommendation? I know, really. Atlantic. Atlantic. I don't know if there's much on the Atlantic. Smaller fish. Like what? Uh, you know, like sardines are very small, and you know, salmon small. Like the smaller fish. It has to be wild, though. It has to be wild. It has to be wild fish. Uh, you don't want to get farm raised. Wild is actually better than organic fish, too. So I don't buy organic fish, we buy wild fish because you want them freely moving. You know, we said with Alzheimer's, we got to keep that body moving. You also want to eat food that's moving. So when you buy chicken, uh, you guys buy cage free chicken? What does it mean? Right, cage free doesn't mean anything. We want free roaming. Because cage free, like you guys are all stuck here in this cage, right? We're not getting a lot of exercise here. So they could be in this tiny little room but not getting in the pasture and not eating a good healthy vegetarian diet. So we want pasture raised chicken and and stuff like that and wild fish as well. And free free range eggs. Free range eggs, exactly. Free range. Not cage free, but free range. Uh, uh, uh. At the supermarket said farm fish, what's that mean? Right, farm fish is not good. So that means they have these little areas where they're just, uh, they're, they're caged in and they can't freely move in the water. So it's not in the ocean? It's not in the ocean, correct. Yeah. So, so when you buy your fish, does it say from the Atlantic? Well, you have to ask your fish person, where is this from? Uh, they don't necessarily label where it's from, but they should know where their products are coming from. If it's in a can, they always say where it's from, but you don't want to buy stuff in a can. So what about sushi? <clears throat> Raw fish? Yeah. What's your question? Should you eat it? Yeah, from a, because you don't know the source. If yeah. It's coming from a... Sushi's from very a dangerous. I mean, in New York City especially, I mean, they did all this research and found, like, none of that sushi was real. About 90% of the sushi wasn't even real. Real? It was imitation, was it real? yeah. Oh, you're kidding. There wasn't even real fish. Wow. Yeah. So you gotta be very careful from where where you get your your food. It's much. It's just easiest to eat at home. I know it's a lot harder. You know, your health is work. You know, you gotta exercise. We're just gonna summarize right now. So we have to exercise. Uh, we gotta take our vitamin D is very important. The other supplements that are super important for your brain are omega threes. 
Uh, so they have a lot of fat. Remember we said fat is very good for the brain. We have those here as well. And the gut too, probiotics we were talking about. Those are super important. Those are the big three supplements are vitamin D, uh, probiotics, and the omega-3s are the three that I personally take. And then like we said, if we look at your blood work and if anything else is deficient, then you could do some other stuff. Only if you're deficient though. Probiotics meaning the pills? <clears throat> we actually do powder. So the powder probiotics because it's easier to digest. So a lot of times when people have decreased stomach acid or uh, poor digestive, they take these pills and they don't even can't break it down. So I always start off my patients with the powder form first. Our omega-3s, they're liquid. The vitamin D is liquid. So all the stuff that we have is the easy to digest because most supplements are very, very hard to digest. All right? So we got to do our breathing exercises. Uh, we got to get our sunlight, we got to get our exercise, the 20-minute rule, getting up every 20 minutes, doing those little shoulder rolls. Uh, water, we didn't speak about, we got to drink a lot of water, you got to drink half your body weight in ounces every single day. Uh, we have to give to charity, we got to help other people, we got to laugh, be in the community. Uh, if you guys are interested, we have a book that summarizes everything. Uh, for you, it's normally we sell it for $20. We're giving everyone here for free. Uh, so you guys can take it home with you and enjoy it.